All right, let's talk about writing our packages as a continuation of our vertical tutorials. I'm gonna flip over to the vertical website here and uh, I'm actually in the Get Started tab. There's lots of useful information in, in terms of getting started without these videos. But uh, for this video, we're gonna talk about our packages because this is something you get for free in a vertical project. And it's also something uh, that is uh, part of the fundamental structure of a vertical project. Basically, we're going to look at uh, how to make a new R package using the R package skeleton you get as a default template in RStudio. Uh, it's got some pretty simple steps reflected in this figure here. We make a, we choose a new one in the RStudio project template, and then we manipulate some of the files we put our functions in this folder, we put our documentation in this folder, and then basically we click build and we will install our R package. It's really that simple. And what's really cool is if we use the package down package, we can actually in one line of code, create a whole website for the R package. And that's what uh, this website was made with. Now vertical just uh, runs with this idea, uses all these very same things, and adds a few more folders to put your uh, psych research assets in. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we're going to be relying on the package down suite to uh, make our vertical project website for us. And y you may or may not want to actually include an R package in your vertical project. That's, you, that's up to you. Um, there's a lot of benefits to including an R package, especially if you are running custom functions that you need for your analysis. This would be a way for you to package uh, those the, the source code for those functions right alongside your manuscript and, and data all in the same place. Okay, so let's jump into it. I've got a brief tutorial lined up and I think, let's see, for this one, uh, we'll see how it goes and it's gonna be focused on uh, beginners. If you've never made an R package, this will provide some pointers on how to go about doing it. And you'll see some of the basic stuff is pretty pretty straightforward. Now there's a, there's a lot to it that I'm not going to go into. Uh, so this will be a just a kind of quick overview. We've talked about this file folder structure that we get with an R package. Now Vertical makes that file structure and adds to it. And uh, oh, let's just move on to pointing out that if you want to learn more about uh, making our packages, I suggest you go read Hadley Wickham's free book right here. And this covers everything you need to know about making our packages. Okay, so we're gonna run through this example here. We're gonna make a new package that's an R package and sorry, a new project that's in our package and see how this goes. See if we can do these three steps, write some functions, make a website. So let's do that. We'll open up our studio and we don't have a default project right now, uh, but I'm gonna make one. So I'll click new project, new directory, and we have the R package option here. If you choose vertical project, you're going to also uh, create some of these template files. Let's just do it. Test R package is going to be the name that I will choose. I've created a Git repository here and it's going to go into my desktop. Uh, you, because I made a Git repository out of this, I could put this up on GitHub and other people could download it and install this R package right from GitHub, which is pretty cool. So what did we get here when we loaded this up? We've got an R folder. In here, we've got our R functions. This one is called hello.r. It's simply a text file that's loaded up by default right here. And it has a simple function in it called hello. If you were to load up this function and run it, it would print hello world. We can try that for ourselves just by copying this and running it in the console. The function appears in our global environment. And if we type hello, uh, it prints out hello world. So that's a very simple function. 
The documentation for this function resides in the man folder as a rd document. This is what this looks like. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, we won't be learning how to write these. We'll be using a different way of doing it that automatically produces the documentation file. We'll talk about the description file and the namespace file later, but briefly, the description file is for adding metadata to your to describe your R package, and the namespace file is for determining which functions you want to make available to other users with your R package. So that's pretty much it. Um, you've got an R project file, an R folder for your .R functions, a man folder for your documentation, a description file, and a namespace file. You can add many more kinds of files and folders that do various things. We'll get to those later. But once you have this basic structure here, you should be able to go and build uh, and then press install and restart. And this will actually compile everything here into the R package um, formula uh, or library, and it will install it in your local R packages list. So if we go down here, look for test R package, we should see, where is it? Gotta keep going. There it is. And we've installed this package. So I'm just going to quickly do a restart R. So I've restarted R. Oh, actually, what I want to do is get out, get this out of here. Um, so I'm going to clear the workspace. Clearing the workspace, yes. So it's as if I've um, started anew. And we should see that if we type hello, uh, there is no function called hello because it doesn't exist in the global environment. And the R package that we just made that contains this function right there has not been loaded. So we could load it by clicking this, uh, which runs for us the library test R package. Now that it's loaded, we should be able to run the function. Okay, great. Uh, note also that we can look at the hello function here and we could see the documentation for it. So we've done steps one and two. The third step is make this website. And this is so cool. If you have the package down library loaded, two colons, and we're going to run build underscore site. This is one liner. You do that. And if you have a properly formatted R package skeleton or series of files, uh, you will automatically make this website. So in this case, this is going to produce a reference tab where you can read the function documentation. We can add lots more things to this website. I'll give one quick example. Uh, this will kind of highlight something that we'll talk about very shortly, which is that we can add more things to this series of files and folders. For example, when we made the website, the website files created uh, were compiled into a docs folder, as we're now familiar with. If we created a folder called vignettes, we'd be able to put in our markdown files that we could also get printed to and saved to the website. I'm going to quickly use a package called use this. And I'm going to say use underscore vignette. And I'm going to give a name test one. Let's see what happens here when I do that. We'll talk about use this momentarily. It's a convenient set of packages or a, a convenient set of functions that allow you to um, add new things to an R package in the, in the proper way. There's these syntax you need to learn. So if I want to add a vignette to the vignette folder, um, I would have to know that I need to make a vignettes folder and go in there and make a, an RMD file that looked like this and had this kind of structure. But if I didn't know that, I could just run this line of code that I ran right here. 
and it would make all these things for me, which was really great. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just quickly giving an example. This would be an RMD file. If I knit this, we're going to create a really simple uh, vignette. And notice what happened here is I actually load the test R package library, which we've now installed. And I write a quick line of text and then I run the function hello and it gets printed and all this stuff works. If I go back to package down and build the site again, see what happens here. We've now added automatically a vignette to an articles tab that appears for free. And we can read that here, right here. All right, so that's a really quick example of uh, making a new R package, modifying some of these files, and also using package down to render this website. Let's move on, talk a little bit about the description file. So uh, for here, I just want to point out that the description file is used to provide metadata about the package. So things like the title, the version number, who the authors are, a brief description. You can add a license file here and several other things. Actually, one really nice thing about the description file is you can declare dependencies here. If you use functions from other packages, you can describe them here. So if someone installs your package, they will also install the other packages that they need that yours depends on. This is another great example of why use this is very useful um, because it might not be obvious right away what new things you can add to a description file. And if you buy into the use this uh, way of doing things, um, it will automatically write lines to this description file for you uh, that, are, that keep uh, the pro proper syntax. Okay. In the next couple examples, we're gonna look more closely at the R folder and the man folder for documentation. So far, all we've done is loaded up the default template with this hello function. What if you wanted to write a new function? Well, you could uh, use this again and use the use R function to add a new one. Let's see what happens. If we run this line, we're going to see that we added a new file to the R folder. It's called my underscore mean and is a dot R file and it loads it up here right for us. So if we were getting ready to create a new function for our package, uh, we could do it this way and it automatically creates the file we need. Then we'd want to write a function. I'll just copy this one in a simple mean function and press save. Great. So that's basically all we need to do. Uh, however, notice that there is no documentation for this function in the man folder. So let's go ahead and talk about creating documentation. We're going to talk about the newer, easier way using Roxygen 2. And um, I just want to briefly say that it's important to document functions. It tells other people that might be using them how they work. And we could use the same process it will use to document a function to also document our data. And at the end of the day, uh, if you're using this standard and this kind of syntax, which isn't terribly onerous, I don't think, well, then you can display this documentation very nicely on a website. For example, here's the vertical website. If you wanted to look at some of our functions, you could see that uh, we've got documentation for it that you can check out. And you could have, if, you, if your project had some data, you'd be able to click on one of these and see uh, descriptions of the different pieces or columns or factors in the data and what they all mean. Okay. So let's talk about documentation with Roxygen 2. This is another package installed by Vertical automatically. And the basic idea is it's a relatively straightforward uh, commenting syntax, 
that you place above your function in the same .r file. So this is the syntax. It's a hashtag followed by an apostrophe. Um, and uh, then the title, input parameters, what the function returns, whether you want to export this to the namespace, and then you can give examples of running this. There's many more uh, things you can put in here that can expand on your documentation, uh, but the basic idea is you put it all in one place, so you've got your documentation, comments, and your function all in the same file. RStudio can insert a skeleton for you to help you get started because you might not know what all these things are. And at the at, once you're done writing it, you can compile your documentation. So this function DevTools document will create the necessary RD file for you automatically. So let's try this out. Uh, the first thing you need to do if you're in a .r file, you could put your cursor into the function, go to code, and then say insert roxygen skeleton, and this will be inserted for you. And uh, we're just gonna give it a title, a mean function. Parameters refer to the input parameters. So I'm gonna say this is a numeric vector. Return returns to refers to what the function is gonna give back. So this will be a numeric, um, computed mean. Having export means uh, that this function will get written to the namespace file. Then we can give some examples. Notice what happened here. I pressed return and it automatically added a comment, a Roxygen2 comment for me, which is nice. So for an example, I could just write the name of the function and have it compute this. Uh, there's uh, many more things we could add in here. I won't go over that, but I want to point out that if we run the dev tools document function, that we create uh, a file in here in the man folder called myamin.rd. And this is a read only file. It's generated from your .r file and you would not have to edit this by hand. So using the Roxygen 2 way of doing things, you basically never manipulate the files in the man folder. If you were to go and install and restart your R package now, when you go to look at it, you'll see that you've added a new function here and it's got some documentation. If we do build site, we should see that an, a, an additional function has been added, my mean, and we've got some examples here. And it's pretty cool. When you do the example, it'll actually uh, compute it for you and show the result. Okay. I mentioned that you can use this very same documentation process for uh, data, which is pretty cool. Let's walk through that. So there's going to be three steps. We're going to create a data frame. So let's do that right here. I've got some pretend data. We can just create it. Let's say we did this just like that. So we've got some a data frame in our global environment. It looks like this. Now, once we have that, we can... Uh, use this use data function to save the data frame as an RDA file to a data folder, which can then become available later on when someone loads the library. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, our packages and often come with data inside them. For example, the cars data frame has a bunch of data in it. I didn't load this from anywhere. It's part of the base R, I guess. It's part of something. I'm not sure what it's part of. <laughs> Let's see. Car. Um, hmm. Well, anyways, the point is you can put data in an R package. So let's try to put this uh, data frame, my data, into the test R package. Okay. 
using this function, we're basically going to add the my data data frame. So let's run it. And uh, we're getting a printout of a bunch of things that happened. This automatically creates the data folder, which didn't exist before. And we've saved this data frame to the data folder as an RDA file. And we are being asked to document our data. And we can do that by creating another .r file. And we could name that one data. So we do use this use r, which creates another r file. And this one will be called data. There it is. And I'm going to suggest that we use the sinew package, which is another convenient package for producing a roxygen skeleton for data. So we can run this line of code using the make oxygen function from the sinew package. Okay. If we copy all of this stuff into the data.r file, we can begin to write our uh, documentation. Actually, all this stuff will, this will produce documentation with all of these things. It'll say data set title for the title, data set description. So you might want to start here and just see what you get. If you go into, so we need to compile this now into an RD. We can run DevTools document. You can also set up a macro to do that under tools project options, build tools, and I want to generate documentation with our oxygen. I'd click that on, press OK. So now if I go Shift Command D on a Mac, then um, it will produce the RD file or should have. But yeah, there's my data.rd. Great. So let's run, oh, first of all, let's install and restart this package. Let's uh, build it. And we should see a new function reference added. This time it's called my data and it's going to refer to some data. And you could go in here and say, well, it's a data frame with however many rows and variables, and then go in and, and uh, define what the variables actually refer to and maybe describe details about how the data was collected. So that's a neat thing about packaging data in an R package. I will also mention once it's in the R package, you can call it, uh, whoops, and there it is. It's not a function, it's a piece of data. So when you load that package, this data becomes available. And that could be useful in your own analysis uh, pipeline. If you put your actual data in, a, in your own package, when you load it up, it becomes available as a data frame for further analysis. All right, uh, getting into some things that might require a second video, but if you're going to be using vertical for a psych project and you have raw data, the suggestion in terms of our packages is to store that raw data in a folder called data-raw. You can create this folder yourself or you can uh, use this to do it. So use data raw will create that folder for you. And I think I'll kind of go into these issues at, in a later video where we have some actual data to work with. In terms of storing data in an R package, there's going to be limitations on the size of the data file. 
that you can store in an R package and even upload to GitHub. So you might uh, not want to store very large data files in an R package. However, you could still use the um, documentation functions to produce documentation for a data file, even if it's not properly stored in the package. Okay. Another important file here in an R package is the namespace file. Um, basically, the namespace file controls whether the function that you create, so we created a function called myMean, can be accessed later on when a user installs and loads the package. It's possible to include many functions in your R package that are not exported to the namespace. And in those cases, a user won't be able to call them when the package is loaded. Okay, we've kind of talked about how to build the package, how to make the package down website, and how to load the package with the library command if you were to upload the repository, so here we've got test our package as a folder on my desktop. If I was to share this on GitHub, then it would exist probably in a place called crump lab for me slash test our package. That's where it would exist on my GitHub. And if this was up there, someone else could use this dev tools package and the install underscore github function type in the the location of the repository on github and then you'd be able to download and install the package right from github so that's how we're sharing this vertical package it's the same process we've got the vertical package on a github repository and this is how you install it Um, what else do I want to say about packages as a brief overview? It's totally possible that when you write functions or even use functions in a vertical project, you'll be using functions from other packages. So that creates a dependency issue. If someone wanted to reproduce what you were doing, they would need the same packages that you were using to use those functions. And, uh, if you know which dependencies you have, then uh, you could use the use this use package function to help list the packages that your stuff depends on. So for example, I'll just give an example here. Let's say I'm going to be making an R package and it's going to depend on dplyr. Whoops. Okay. So I ran this line and it's going to add dplyr to the imports field in the description file. So it's created an imports field and we've added this package. And you could continue to add the other packages that your uh, yours might depend on. If you were going to use other packages and the functions from those packages when you write an R function, you should write your function this way with uh, the name of the package followed by two colons and the name of the function from that package. We talked about vignettes already, how you could add them to an R package and when you build the website, you'll automatically get this nice R Markdown document rendered. In the context of a vertical project, this is a convenient way to add supplemental materials. Okay, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about R packages for this video. And let's stop here.